Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so faithful. My, 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 my. We're just so excited about how God is moving and what God is doing. Amen. Amen. And we're going to shift right now. We're going to go to the word of God. I believe that the Lord is speaking like never before uh, to his saints uh, for a time such as this. And we're going to dive right into the word of God. You could have been anywhere on this Sunday. You could have been anywhere, but I believe that the Lord positioned you here because there's something that he wants for you to hear. I ask right now that you would share this broadcast. Share it all down your timeline. I believe that there's somebody here that needs a word. And all God needs to do is speak a word and it will change somebody's life. It will set somebody free. Do you believe that? Oh, hallelujah. So listen, we're going to ask that you would share this broadcast. And we're believing that somebody will accept an invitation to have Jesus Christ in their heart in Jesus' name. Listen, we are on a journey. We are in a series. And the series is simply called Identity Crisis. Identity Crisis. We launched it out last week. And this is going to be part two today. And the Lord has instructed me to teach the people on identity. And we're going to flow right through the word of God. And we're believing that God is going to speak loud and clearly to us like never before in Jesus' name. Open up your Bibles, if you would, to the Gospel of Matthew. Open up your Bible to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 through 58. Yes, yes, yes. Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 through 58. Hallelujah. You have it say amen. Don't have it say hold up. Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 through 58. And I will be reading this morning from the ESV, the English Standard Version. It reads as follows. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there. And coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue. So that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. The people of God said amen. amen. I want to talk for the next few minutes from this subject, which is a declaration. And that declaration is walking in any way. I need somebody to repeat after me. Walk in it anyway. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the word that you have set forth before us. And we thank you, Lord, for what you have in store for this Sunday. Lord, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. So we believe you by faith that you would speak loud and clearly. Even use me. Help me behind your cross. Fresh anointing. Let it fall fresh on me, Lord God, that your word would go forth with boldness, with clarity. And it would accomplish the very thing that you have set out for it to do before the foundation of the world. We need to hear from you, Lord God. We believe you by faith that you would show up loud and clear in the name of Jesus. Thank you in advance that you would remove any obstacles in our path that keeps us from hearing and receiving this word in the name of Jesus. Open up our eyes, open up our ears, open up our hearts 
to receive you, Lord, that we would never be the same again. We believe you, Lord, that if this word would convict us, instruct us, motivate us, move us to change, and we would walk in obedience, doing what you've called us to do in the name of Jesus. So we thank you in advance for what you're going to accomplish. Oh, we believe you to move supernaturally and have your way like never before in the name of Jesus. So we ask right now that you would speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. And we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. The people of God shouted, amen. amen. Walk in it anyway. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. I've always been fascinated by this time of year. For some of y'all who didn't know, yesterday was the official first day of spring. I am fascinated by spring because there are things that you see around you that are lying barren. But all of a sudden, in an instant, you see things growing out of them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. One thing with this springtime season that I am not fascinated by and I don't understand <laughs> is that demon called pollen. I am convinced that pollen is not of God. I am convinced that pollen needs to go somewhere else and not here. Is there some one witness that can leave at least agree with me with this pollen? When we get to heaven, one of the questions I'm going to have when I, before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Lord, why did you allow pollen to kick my behind year after year after year? Somebody has that, that agreement with me. Amen. But even still, and I asked God this, and I was joking, but God came back and said, wherever there's growth, it's going to be uncomfortable. I said, Lord, you ain't have to do that. You ain't have to do that. But listen, I am fascinated by springtime. And I wanted to come here to officially congratulate you on your springtime. Wait, 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 Pastor, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? See, I am on specific assignment this morning, and God has given me instruction to affirm and congratulate that the people of God are about to walk into their spring season. Yes. Uh, yes. So I want to personally congratulate you. Danielle, I know you hear you gave your testimony, and it was a confirmation that you're walking into your spring season. Are you seeing this? Somebody's wondering, well, how do you know? You're in a spring season. See, here's how you know that you're in a spring season. Because you realize that you had some barren places in your life, but you serve a God that can use what was barren and cause it to blossom. You know you're in a spring season that when you used to edify, you wanted to edify the things of your flesh, but now you now want to feed your spirit. You know that you're in a spring season. Now you realize you're in a spring season where there are things that don't honor God. All of a sudden they begin to turn you off. And now you're only attracted to the things that glorify God. Am I talking to somebody? That's how you know you're in a spring season. You know you're in a spring season that there were some storms that you used to go through that used to make you depressed and now it makes you pressed. It used to make you throw in the towel before. Now it makes you get on your knees and pray. It makes you want to give up and be discouraged before. But now you're encouraged because there's something inside of you that's pushing you to keep going. No matter what it looks like or what it feels like. There's something that's pushing you. And said it can't end like this. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? Is there somebody that's walking into their spring season? Because I used to be down and out. But now I'm hopeful. Even though the season didn't change, I heard God speak a word. And when God speaks a word, the situation has to to obey the word of God. I don't quite know who I'm talking to, but I wanted to congratulate you for walking into your spring season. This is why you should never make permanent declaration on your barren places because you serve a God that can take something that's dried up 
and all of a sudden things will begin to sprout from it. You thought the marriage was over, but God can take something that looked dead and make it alive. You know why? Because your season has shifted. God can take something that it seems like it's nothing left and you might as well write it off. But Jesus says, wait a minute. Don't write off the dead thing. You must have forgot. I am the resurrection. So you have to understand. You better kiss your winter goodbye. Because God says, behold, forget the former things of old. I shall do a new thing. And it shall spring forth now. Congratulations, somebody. You're in your spring season. Oh, somebody give God praise if you're grateful for your spring season. Oh, somebody give God glory if you're ready to walk in it like never before in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But wait a minute. I got to tell you something, though. Here's what happens when you walk in your spring season. Your spring season in the natural is everything changes. Oh, God, I'm trying to help somebody. But when you are in your spiritual spring season, spring happens in you, but it doesn't always happen around you. Oh, can, can, can we talk about it for a second? We're talking about identity here. Your identity is that you are a child of God and you're walking in your spring season. But please understand, when spring happens, spring is a move of God on the inside of you but when it's a move of God on the inside of you it doesn't always happen around you oh get to it pastor what are you talking about what are you saying see here's what you've got to understand just because you are excited about your spring season doesn't mean everybody else would be oh God God see 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 here's why see when springtime happens in you, it has a way of revealing that you had some winter relationships. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm, try, I'm, try to, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. Sometimes you don't realize how your relationships were winter relationships until you shifted into your spring season. So what ends up taking place, watch this y'all, when you're in the spring season, you've sensed it and you're walking in it, but just because you're walking in it doesn't mean other people recognize it. Yeah. Are you here? It doesn't mean other people recognize it. And I want to say this because this is very important as I encourage you to walk in your spring season. See, sometimes when you shift into your spring, people can only recognize you for your winter. When you shift into your spring, God did not give and equip everybody what they needed to handle the change that's happening in your life. Oh, am I helping somebody here? So here's what happens. You've got to be diligent to still walk in it, but not be surprised when everybody doesn't receive it. Oh, see, 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 I have to say this to somebody because some of us, need to be delivered from people pleasing. Yes. Oh God. Come on now. See, there is an identity crisis that takes place because sometimes it's a disconnect between what God has told you about you and what God has told them about you. God, when he reveals identity to you, he's not obligated to tell everybody else. Oh, are y'all hearing this? So, sometimes it can cause a crisis. What do you mean? It can cause a crisis, watch this, because people around you can't handle your change. And they start to get upset that you've changed and they don't know that you're in a spring. They're saying, why are you acting brand new? Because they had a winter expectation. Oh God, am I helping somebody here? But here's what happens. Some of us, if we're not careful, you will miss out on the things of God because you will hear God calling you to break greatness, but you'll settle for mediocrity because it makes everybody comfortable. Oh, man. 
Can I, y'all let me teach this real quick? Some of us are not walking in full potential because when we start growing out of our codependency, people got mad. Some of us are not walking in our fullness because when our credit store started going up, people couldn't understand it. They started to stick their nose up. See, people aren't walking in their greatness because when you started walking in promotion on your job, walking in success, walking in the joy of the Lord, doing what God had called you to do, giving up some of those habits, some of those people weren't able to handle it. But there are sometimes if you are a people pleaser, sometimes we'll scale back who we are to fit other people around us. Sometimes we'll fit in the box that somebody tried to set for us because some people would try to fight you by holding on to the winter you and never accept the spring you. Can I talk about it? See, this is a prophetic word for somebody because I know somebody's dealing with it right now. And it's tough because there's people that are close to you that can't fathom why you love Jesus so much. They can't fathom how come you don't drink no more. They can't fathom how come you don't go to a place that you used to go. They can't fathom it because you've gone into your spring. But I'm believing in 2021 is spring and God is delivering his people from people pleasing. Would you rather have your friends comfortable or would you rather have God be pleased? Would you rather have applause from your neighbors or would you rather have an applause from God? I don't want to hear well done from you. I want to hear well done from God. And it might not matter to me any longer because if you have a problem with me growing in God, I got to walk in it anyway. If you got an issue with me going to the next level in Christ, I've got to walk in it anyway. Is there somebody here that's tired of living up to the expectations of your cousin and your auntie and your friends and the folk that you grew up with on the block? You have to say, I'm not that person anymore. God has delivered me from my barren places. And I don't know about you, but I refuse to go back to where I used to be. I refuse to become who God delivered me from. I'm going to walk in it anyway because God told me to go and I'm going to go. Somebody give God praise right now. If you're declaring right now, it's my spring season and I'm going to walk in it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, amen. Woo! Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there was somebody that understood what it was like to be misunderstood, mm -hmm. it was Jesus Christ. If you're someone that's trying to move into your season, but you're surrounded by people who aren't there with you and surrounded by people who don't understand what God is doing, you are not by yourself. There was a man named Jesus Christ who went through the very same thing that you're going through right now. But just like I'm telling you, Jesus is also telling you, walk in it anyway. So we look at this text. Hallelujah. And we see Jesus was in the season of his earthly ministry. It's amazing that he was king of kings and lord of lords. And he knew all, all that he was on earth. But his ministry had an appointed time. And it was not for him to walk in it until he was 30 years old. See, it's sometimes not enough to know that you're called, but you also have to know when you're called. Sometimes it's not enough to know that you have a ministry and anointing on you. you got to move in God's timing. Are you seeing it? So watch this. So we see Jesus Going back to his hometown. Going back to the place that he was raised. Oh, God. Going back to a familiar place that he came from. And one thing that I've noticed is God has a way of delivering you from some stuff. Calling you into a spring season. And when he restores you. Sometimes he will command you to go back where you came from so people can see the power and the glory of God on your life. Are you seeing this? Sometimes God will have you go back 
to places, not to get back into trouble, but to go back to places to be a light, to let them know that you don't ever have to stay the same. Because when God is moving in your life, things have to change. Sometimes he'll cause you to go back to your hometown and you don't have to brag, you don't have to boast. All you have to do is walk in joy and walk in your peace and people will notice there's something different about you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So watch this. So we see in this tough text a blueprint. There is a blueprint that I see, Teresa, that is going to give us instruction on how to walk in our kingdom identity. I see it right there. It's in this text that God is going to teach us how to walk into our spring season in our kingdom identity. I've got three things and then we're going to roll down from this place. The first thing is Matthew chapter 13 verse 53. The Bible says when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there. Watch this. And coming to his hometown. Now, if you read the Gospels of Jesus, you will notice a common thread. Jesus never appeared anywhere by accident. Jesus never appeared anywhere by accident. If Jesus showed up in a town and met with somebody that needed healing, it was a calculated move and it was an intentional move because when Jesus was on purpose, Wherever he went, he was always in a place that God called him to be. Amen. Point number one, for walking in your kingdom identity, you can't afford to waste your steps. Oh my. You can't afford to waste your steps. It's right there in the text. The Bible says when he finished the parables, he finished teaching the people, he went to his own town. And he went to his hometown because his steps always had purpose and he was never in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if you are walking in your kingdom identity, it's important that you don't take steps that are outside where God told you to be. All right. See, too many times we have a calling and we have a purpose and we're wondering why there's no favor on our life. And God says, yes, you know the calling, but it's not enough to be called. You've got to be where I called you to be in order to experience the favor of God in your life. You've got to be positioned where God told you to be positioned in order for you to experience the blessings of God. Am I talking to somebody here? There's too many times in 2021 that we have a shout, but then we waste steps because we end up being in relationships that God didn't say yes to. We end up being in friendships that God didn't say yes to. You are in spring season, so you got to let the winter folk go right quick because we understand your steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and we cannot afford to waste our steps. Is that talk? Somebody knows what I'm talking about here. See, how many know in this season when you have identity you can't be with God one minute and be in the world the next minute? See, when you have identity in Christ, you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit one minute and be drunk with wine the next minute. When you have identity in Christ, you have to make up in your mind, if it ain't purpose, I ain't going to be there. If it ain't going to glorify God, I ain't going to be there. Because I don't know about you, there's promises of God on my life. And I want everything that God says I can have. And I understand I have to step where he told me to step in order to get what I'm going to get from God. I want to be obedient, not because of what I want. I just want to please God. And we have to make sure in this season, we cannot waste our steps. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It's very critical that you are mindful of where you step in this season. People who are called to a spring season have a target on their back. Who am I talking to? Because whenever you're walking in obedience, you have a target on your back from the enemy who wants to keep you back and wants to hit you so you don't do what God has called you to do. But I declare and I decree 
in this season, God is raising up some saints that know their name and know who they are. And they look at some places and say, I used to go there, but that's not me. <laughs> I used to do that, but now that's not me. Because now I'm healed. Now I'm anointed and appointed. Now I'm called of God. Now I'm the righteousness of God. Now I'm the head and not the tail. Now I'm above and not beneath. Now I'm the lender and not the bower. And I'm not going to go back to the place that I asked God to deliver me from. I'm going to go to the place that God delivered me to. Somebody say amen. amen. So watch this. You can't afford to waste your steps. Because listen, man of God, woman of God, I would hate for you to be out of position. Mm -hmm. And God is asking you, what does the blessing look like at the place you're supposed to be? Mm -hmm. uh, what does the favor look like at the place that you're ordained to be? And then God will say, why are you wasting time being in a place that you're not? It doesn't match you. It doesn't match your identity. It doesn't match your calling. You're better than this. And God has something special for you. But you've got to make sure you don't waste your steps. My steps are ordered, but my steps will not be wasted. God told me where to walk, but I still got to make a decision to walk it. God told me what to do. I still got to make a decision. You still got to make a decision. Don't waste your steps in this season because there's somebody along the steps that needs the ministry that you have. There's somebody along those steps that needs a healing. And when you walk into obedience, you'll be able to do exactly what God called you to do and be a blessing to the people that God called you to bless. Wasted steps hurts you and hurts them. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to point number two. My, my, my. What a tough text this is. This text grieved my heart. We're right here in the word. Watch what happened. The Bible says in verse 54. Y'all still in the word? Yeah. In verse 54, he said Jesus came to his hometown and he didn't visit and say, hey, what's up? How y'all doing? What y'all fix? He didn't do none of that. He stayed about his father's business. Amen? He went into the synagogue, and the Bible said he started to teach. But watch what happened. As soon as he started to teach, look at the reaction. Go to the word, the word with me. Verse 54. The Bible says they were astonished. They were blown away. But they said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Hold up, hold up. Ain't that the carpenter's son? Ain't that that snotty nose boy used to run up and down the street back in the day? Ain't that the one who used to get into all kind of stuff? Who is, who is this? That's Mary's little boy, ain't it? And he ain't here talking these great words and this great work. But wait a minute. Who does he think he is? And are not his brothers? That's James and Joseph's brothers. James and Joseph over there. But look at Jesus. He's over here now. What in the world? Where did he get this from? Point number two. Never allow appearance to be more important than anointing. Never allow appearance to be more important than the anointing. It's in the text. Can you imagine what would happen if Jesus in the flesh was at your church preaching? Jesus had no sin nature. So when Jesus taught, it was pure anointing. I don't think we'd be able to make it through a service if Jesus opened up his mouth and there was pure anointing. I don't think we would make it through. But truth be told, he was speaking and he was teaching and the people around acknowledged that there was wisdom there. Acknowledged that there were great works there. 
but they were distracted by the appearance. See, every time, listen to me, y'all. Here's what identity. When God sends you something, don't be so caught up in the appearance of it that you miss the anointing in it. Oh, God, I feel like preaching this. Don't be so caught up in what it looks like that you miss the spirit behind it. Are you seeing this? So there were people, and the Bible says to him, these people who heard the word of God and they saw the works of God. Notice what they said. I want to talk about this. He said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? What mighty works? He was just teaching. What mighty works? He was just teaching. What mighty works? How many know the word of God is connected to the works of God? Whenever the word of God is going forth, there's works of God going forth. Whenever the Bible is being declared, there was a work of the spirit taking place in the atmosphere. And they understood that the word was being taught, but there was works taking place too. But they acknowledged the word, they acknowledged the works, but they were distracted by the appearance and they missed the anointing. How many times had God sent us something and we were so caught up in what it looked like, we missed that it was from God? How many times has God has blessed something and put it right in our path? And God says, man looks at outward appearance, but it's God that looks at the heart. You've got to be delivered from your eyes and start moving in your spirit to see what God is showing you. Because I would hate for you to miss the anointing based on the appearance. I would hate for you to miss your blessing based on what you wanted it to look like. I'd hate for you to miss your next level because you're caught up on what the appearance of it is. We've got to get to the place where we've got to put our flesh aside. We've got to put our emotions aside. We've got to put our feelings aside and say, Lord, show me in my spirit what it is. Show me in my spirit. I don't just want to see it with my eyes. I want to see it with my spirit because now when you have your identity, you walk in the anointing. And the more you are anointed, the more you recognize the anointing. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So get to the place that you can deliver from what it looks like and what it feels like. And you're able to recognize the anointing of it. Singles, I got a word for you right quick. It's a commercial. It's a commercial. Can I tell you something about Teresa Twigs? Teresa Twigs is fine as all get out. Somebody say amen. Uh, that's enough amen. Tell me hallelujah. Listen, <laughs> Teresa is fine. You hearing me? But guess what? I was into her appearance, but I didn't marry her because of her appearance. I married her because of her anointing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're walking in identity, you're not looking for how we look good together on the picture. You're looking how good we look in the spirit. Yeah. You're not looking at how good we look in the selfie, but you're looking how good we look in the eyes of God. How can two walk together lest they agree? And we've got to get to the place that we're looking for the anointing because when you're walking in identity you're looking for the things of God I don't care how short it is I don't care how tall it is I don't care how it looks like I don't care how comfortable it feels but if the anointing is on it I've got to go with it Woo, are y'all hearing this? never allow appearance to be more important than anointing and it's a sad thing that people had the king of kings in their town but ended up walking away the same way because they didn't have the faith to believe it was really God. What a sad thing it is to have Jesus Christ himself in your synagogue teaching, things moving, but you can't get past what you saw in his past. Oh, God. What would it look like where the blessing that you've been praying for is at your doorstep, but you don't receive it because you don't like the packaging? Somebody say amen. amen. Watch this. You are hereby delivered. Who am I talking to? From the appearances of it. You're delivered by making decisions 
with your eyes. You deliver from making that decisions with your eyes and your flesh. And from here on out, when you walk in your spring season, your spirit has the final say. Because the spirit inside of you is the Holy Spirit that knows all. Somebody say amen. amen. Watch this point number one. Ooh, I feel like preaching this. You can't afford to waste your steps. <laughs> point number two. Never allow appearance to be more important than anointing. Oh, man. But I need you to still be in a text with me. We're just teaching this. I need you to be in a text with me. Watch what happened. After they asked the questions, oh, wait a minute. Yo, he is breaking it down. He is bringing the heat on the word. Mm -hmm. There's transformation that's taking place. But wait a minute. That's not the carpenter's son? Ain't that Mary's boy? Joseph, uh, Simon, and James' brother? But the Bible says in verse 57, and they took offense at him. It's one thing for you to not agree that it's God. But it's another thing for you to get upset at him. And the Bible said they took offense to him walking in who he was. Oh, wow. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm noticing the people that took offense were not demons from the kingdom of darkness. Oh, no. The people that took offense were not their known enemies. Oh, God, this is going to mess somebody up. The very people who took offense were people that knew him. Whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Are y'all reading the Bible? Are y'all reading the Bible? The very people that took offense to Jesus are the very people who grew up with Jesus. I, I, I don't know if you understand what took place. It's one thing for the devil to reject you. It's one thing for the enemy's camp to reject you. But what do you do when your main source of rejection are the very people that know you? It's one thing for somebody that doesn't like me because of my skin color. There's one thing for somebody to be jealous because I'm walking in the things of God. But what do you do when the people that are rejecting you have your same last name? And did I tell you, Therese, you see this in the text? I believe some of the same people that rejected him in this season were the same people that accepted him in last season. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what do you do when people that were walking with you all of a sudden turn their back on you because of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I talk to somebody right now? And it's very important for you to understand this truth. Two promises that I have when you walk in ministry. Y'all ready? All of us are called to ministry. You might not be a pastor or a bishop. You might not be called to preach in a pulpit, but you're called to preach somewhere. Yeah. Amen. You're going to preach on the vlog, Danielle. You're going to, literally, you're going to preach on the vlog. Hear what I'm saying? So watch this. Here's what you got to understand. Two promises. You said yes. Tim, I heard you say yes the other week. Y'all said yes. Two promises. Promise number one. You will be received. Promise number two, you will be rejected. I think y'all missed it. Can I say it one more time? In case y'all missed the promises and the guarantee that come with ministry. Promise number one with ministry, you will be received. Promise number two with ministry, you will be rejected. And if you don't handle rejection well, Come on now. you're going to have a problem with ministry. Come on now. Because I've never met anybody that's called to ministry that didn't have to go through rejection. 
I've never met any preacher that's called to preach. Every person that's called to street ministry, every person that's called to children, at some point in your life, you will experience rejection. Somebody hear what I said? So it doesn't make you go in the other direction when you experience rejection. Sometimes the enemy will use the people who are the closest to you to reject you. But you know what the solution is? Walk in it anyway. <laughs> You're wondering, yes, pastor, I'm dealing with this right now. I've just said yes to my call to preach. But one of my aunties telling me that I'll never preach because I was too out there back in the day. Walk in it anyway. She didn't call you to preach. God called you to preach. Yep, you're called to serve out in the streets, to feed the homeless. Yeah, but people are telling me that I can't do it. You know what? Walk in it anyway. Because I know the rejection, it hurts, and it sticks close. When I know you, I know you have my last name, but I'm walking in Jesus' name. And God will raise up some other friends for me. God will raise up some other family for me. Because I've made up my mind a long time ago. I have decided to make Jesus my choice. Is there somebody here that says, I know they're going to reject me. And I say, no, he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know people are looking to reject you. I know we grew up 30 years ago, but I'm in Christ. I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You've made all things new. And I will follow you forward. Somebody give God praise right now. Watch this. Jesus. Point number three. Did you write this down? We got to go. I feel the anointing here. Hallelujah. Point number three. Please write this down. It's simply this. Don't let familiar rejection kill your kingdom boldness. Wow. Don't let familiar rejection kill your kingdom boldness. I used to read, and still do, the epistles, the letters of Paul in the New Testament. And tell me, you know what I saw in the letters of Paul? God used him to plant churches all over Asia. But there were some churches that he raised it up and blessed. And then he wrote to them later and let me know that some of the same people he had helped grow in Christ with the same people that were questioning his credentials. And I said, I can never understand that until I started pastoring. And one thing I have discovered in seven years of pastoring, I know what it's like to hold somebody's hand in one season, but then take the knife out of my back the next season. I know what it's like to lose sleep for somebody I thought was with us, but they ended up being against us. But can I tell you, sometimes I say, God, how could you allow this to happen? And God said, I allowed it to happen because it's part of the promise. Yeah. I said, God, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. He said, it's part of the promise. He says, you know what the promise is? You will have tribulation. Yeah. But be of good cheer. I have already overcome the world. Yes. Yep. You will be lied about and mistreated. Yeah. Hallelujah. But what God says about you is what who you are. And I want to tell somebody, whatever you have to go through in your spring season, go through with a smile on your face. Yeah. Because persecution is part of the process that gets you to your purpose. Persecution is part of the process that increases your anointing. Persecution is part of that process that makes you depend on God and know where your source really is. Persecution is something that gives your prayer life and your praise life greater. Because even when you're going through, you can be like David and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be made glad. 
Oh, magnify the world with me and let us exalt his name together. I don't know about you. Whether I'm received or I'm rejected, I'm still going to go. Whether they love me or they hate me, I'm still going to go. Whether they tell me yes or whether they tell me no, I'm, I'm going to go. You know why? Because the persecution is not about you. It's about God anyway. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the Jesus in you. Don't take it personal. They're not coming against you. They're coming against the God in you. That's why Jesus says, whatever you do to the least of my brothers, that's what you do unto me. So don't take it personal. Just stay obedient. Don't take it personal. Just keep preaching. Don't take it personal. Just keep praising. Don't kick it personal. Just keep praying. Because they might reject you. But if God has accepted you, you're all right. Somebody give God praise. Yeah. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I'm going to mess somebody up here. Can I take you you something crazy? Sometimes you get a little bit of years under your belt. And you begin to look at the wounds in your body. From the battle scars that you have on this battlefield called ministry. And you begin to look at the scars. And my prayer is that you be completely healed. But God still leave the scar. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I want you to be completely delivered, but I want God to leave the scar. Because every time you look, you're reminded of how you were hurt. But now you see, God restored me anyway. This one made me get closer to God. This one made me rededicate my life. This one made me get my prayer life better. This one made me go harder for God. This one gave me an authority to walk in spiritual warfare. Whatever it is, I thank God for the wounds because it made you who you are and it shaped your identity. And you are who God says you are, so you better walk in it anyway. Oh, God. Oh, I feel glory. I feel the anointing. Watch this. Watch this. We got to go from this place. But watch this. I love to hear that. Somebody said, take your time. That's music to preacher's ears. Amen. Watch this. The Bible said in verse 58. Oh, even in verse 57. Let's go back to here real quick. A prophet. Oh, no. is not without honor. Except in his own hometown. In his own household. You would think that would be the place where he's most honored. Ugh. But sometimes that's the place where he's least honored. Wow. But look at verse 58. We got to go on this, y'all. The Bible said this. This hurt my heart. This hurt my heart when I read this. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. I guarantee if you were in Nazareth in the year 30 AD, you would find tremendous need. But the Bible says he did not do many mighty works there. Because of their unbelief. He was in position to meet their need. But many of the needs went unmet. Not because of what he did. But because of their unbelief. Wow. I read this and it grieved my heart. But then Jesus, God got a hold of me. In my study, he said, read it again. I said, what are you talking about? Verse 58. And he did not do Many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Okay, that's, that's messed up, Lord. He said, no, read it again. He did not do many mighty works there. You know what God told me? It says he did not do many mighty works there. But it does not say he didn't do any mighty works there. And I had to look at it again and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There was a lot of need. That wasn't done. And the Bible says there were not many works there. Yeah. But I'm glad it says, it doesn't say there were not any works there. Yeah. Which lets me to know there were not many mighty works. Yeah. 
but there were some mighty works. And here's what you've got to understand. Sometimes just because you go to a place and you get rejected doesn't mean God didn't send you there. Just because you go to a place and you get mistreated, it doesn't mean God didn't send you there. You might not have had the response that you expected, but if one person gave their life to Christ, it was all worth it. If one person got healed, it was worth it. If one person got delivered, it was worth it. He might not have done many works, but I'm glad he did something. I'm glad he moved on somebody's house. I'm glad he set somebody free. Stop looking at how big the result is and be grateful for the fruit of obedience because he didn't do many, but somebody saw it and somebody gave his life and somebody started walking with them and somebody came out of bondage. And I'm grateful that whenever God sends you, it might not be what you expect, but God is always going to get his glory. Somebody give God praise in this. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep doing what God told you to do. Because even if one person came forward, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was all worth it. That's right. That's right. It was all worth it. So I need somebody right now to walk in it anyway. They rejected you. Walk in it anyway. It's your spring season. Walk in it anyway. God has anointed you and appointed you for a time such as this. Walk in it anyway. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise right now. Somebody give God praise right now. Somebody give him glory right now. Somebody give him honor right now. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I believe the identity crisis is being solved right now because you're exactly who God says that you are. Oh, and God is telling you to walk in it anyway because he's birthing a blessing out of barren places. It's your season to sprout up. It's your season to blossom. It's your season to bloom in the name of Jesus. And however you've got to go, just go. Just do it and watch God work in your life. There's somebody here now, oh, that's listening to this message. I wanted you to know that, yes, it's your spring season, and it is your appointed time to move in what God called you to do. It's your appointed time to surrender and give your life over to Jesus Christ. Oh, and is this your moment? This is your time 